Hi, I'm Elizabeth Linden with the Power of the Patient Project. Our guest today is Dr. Christy Funk. Dr. Christy Funk is a board certified cancer surgeon and physician, best selling author, international keynote speaker, and women's health advocate. As an ambassador and avid contributor to the Pink Lotus Power Up community, Dr. Funk frequently authors Breast Cancer 101 blogs, shares recipes like her famous antioxidant smoothie, and provides instructional videos on breast cancer and women's health. She is also the host of the Cancer Kicking Summit and Cancer Kicking Pow Out podcast. Dr. Funk practices as a surgical breast specialist at the Pink Lotus Breast Cancer Center in Los Angeles, where she excels as an expert in minimally invasive diagnostic and treatment methods for all types of breast diseases. She has helped thousands of women through, uh, through uh, thousands of women through breast cancer treatment, including well-known celebrities like Angelina Jolie, Cheryl Crow, and others who have turned to her for her surgical expertise. Hello, Dr. Funk, and thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Liz, thanks for having me. So I wanted to ask you a few questions about what you do. And uh, first off, uh, what inspired you to become a breast cancer surgeon and why did you choose the uh, Pink Lotus Center? Oh, okay. So when I was finishing my surgical residency back in 1999, I was in love with the stomach and the esophagus. And laparoscopy, you know, where you make little incisions and insert the camera and you operate, you know, based on the monitor, was just beginning. So actually, my attendings at the time in residency would like elbow me out of the way because they had to learn. And so I knew this was the future and I knew I didn't know how to do it. So I took a fellowship in minimally invasive surgery at Cedar sinai in Los Angeles. And when I got there, the surgeon who ran that fellowship also ran their brand spanking new breast center that was run by five men over 50. And he's like, mm -hmm. yeah, we need estrogen. You have estrogen. You should run the breast center. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, no, uh-uh, breast surgery is easy. I'm not doing that. And he's like, you know, I, you're here for the other fellowship. I get it, but um, you know, just think about it. it. Let me know by Friday, no pressure. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. So, you know, he was a very wise man. And uh, some of the things he said really resonated with me. I let them sit, I prayed about it, thought about it uh, for all of the four days he gave me. And I really had to wrestle with my own hubris. I realized the reason why this seemingly perfect career choice and niche for me was uh, being rejected was that I thought breast surgery was easy and I like to be challenged and I needed to get over that because especially at that time, which was 2001 now, um, he said, I'll tell you, breast surgery was just starting as a subspecialty. And every general surgeon kind of looked at a breast surgeon as like, oh, you're just a breast surgeon. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I needed to get over that to realize what I have realized. And that is, it is not just a breast to any of the women that I treat. And to come alongside women in one of their darkest moments and to hold their hand until they see the light and have a plan that instills confidence and hope and they emerge from this journey victorious has been the greatest privilege of my career. And I couldn't imagine having chosen something else. I would be, I think, um, pretty empty having chosen that. When it comes to the Pink Lotus Breast Center and birthing that baby, I uh, did end up finishing a breast fellowship at Cedar sinai and became the director of patient education there for seven years and was very frustrated by um, the how long it would take to get really quality care for a woman even in this wonderful center you would have a mammogram oh we think we see something when you come back in a week and we'll look at it oh yeah there is something there you know what we should, really should biopsy it we can do that in 10 days for you and it's like this drawn out thing i'm like you know there should be seamless care and 
the Pink Lotus Breast Center really fused state-of-the-art technology with this compassionate, holistic care in a warm environment that felt more homey to people. And it wasn't austere and white with big halls and frightening. So that was the motivation behind birthing Pink Lotus was to just offer women uh, more timely care. Like if you wake up with a lump, you should go to bed tonight mm -hmm. knowing what it is. And you know, mm -hmm. if it's the worst, it's the worst, but at least we have the truth and let's mm -hmm. get after it. So that, that was the initial vision and it's just exploded and grown from there. So Pink Lotus is, um, is really uh, it, the culmination of everything I wanted from my career because it's moved in part to an online platform offering women community and empathy. And there's a division within it under the umbrella of Pink Lotus that's called Elements that offers um, products that are vetted and found to be truly useful and helpful before, during, and after a breast cancer diagnosis. Not like kitschy ribbon earrings, which are fine, but we don't have that there. It's all, you know, like stuff that has been shown in randomized controlled trials, if they exist, to help assuage side effects or reduce risk. It's it's really um, become an amazing journey to see where Pink Lotus kind of did some left and right turns and arrived where we are today. Oh, that's really fascinating. That's really cool. Um, so our next question is, how has breast cancer treatment changed over the course of your career? And um, are there any new treatments that we could look forward to in the future? Oh, for sure. The future, <laughs> the horizon is always bright. In the 20 plus years that I've been doing it, as I kind of just mentioned when I first started the idea of a surgical breast specialist, a breast surgeon dedicated just to benign and malignant disease was very new. There are very few fellowships across the country and now it's commonplace. So as a result of that, over the last two decades, we've seen that we've got a lot of dedicated breast surgeons and therefore we're seeing a lot more aesthetic results. We surgeons are committed you know, to kind of creating small hidden incisions and reconfiguring, reshaping the breast after lumpectomy so it still looks as normal as possible and post mastectomy reconstruction with implants and different flap techniques has also really evolved over the last two decades so that women can come out of their surgical experience feeling more intact inside their own skin, which is beautiful. On the radiation front for breast cancer treatment, we have genomics that's hit the field. So genomics is understanding the genome, the DNA mutations, and then the, express, the expressed genes by the tumor. So not by you, that is its own thing that we you know, draw your blood or spit and we can test your DNA for mutations such as BRCA that predispose you to cancer. I'm talking about the cancer itself, its genetics. And when you're able to interrogate it in different ways, you can more precisely personalize the treatments that you're offering. For example, when it comes to radiation and in situ cancer, stage zero, we massively over-treat 65% of all DCIS because it never would have invaded, never would have been threatening. So who is in that group? Like whose DCIS really doesn't need to be like pounded with a big hammer. Maybe we can just mm -hmm. like gently knock on it and get rid of it that way. So that's come into the field of radiation to find out who needs radiation and not what's the exact benefit of that. And if you do need radiation, we've got these shorter, intense courses now that are really fun options for people. I mean, cancer is not fun, but yeah. if you've got it, let's make it as powerful as it can be. And that might include making some of this kind of intriguing. And so radiation doesn't have to hit the whole breast anymore. Sometimes you need to, but there are many, many women with early stage disease in whom I can put a little catheter and we just kind of nuke the area. That's the high risk zone for recurrence. 96% of recurrences always happen within a centimeter of where the cancer was. So you don't necessarily need to be hitting the more yeah. remote sections of breast causing tissue damage and side effects that can be life last, lifelong in their um, 
like pain and loss of elasticity to the skin. So um, APPI, it, uh, accelerated partial breast radiation allows for that. And IORT, intraoperative radiation therapy. That's my favorite thing because it's so cool. You do a lumpectomy and then you wrap mm -hmm. that lumpectomy site in a balloon and you get the patient gets radiated for 12 minutes. And then I take the balloon out and then aesthetically close everything back together and you are done, one and done. It's it all happened when you were sleeping. So I love IORT. Um, on the oncology front with chemotherapy and anti-estrogen therapy, which is commonly used still of course to treat cancer, that's also become more of a precision medicine thing with the genomics that I mentioned, different way to interrogate that cancer's DNA to find out what the percent chance that this bad boy is going to come back in a metastatic place like lung, liver, brain, bone in 10 years. If that number's high, maybe you're going to bite the chemo bullet because it's worth it. It can make that number lower for you. But if it's already low, you're just doing chemo to see what your head looks like bald, like don't do it, right? And it, there's no loss of survival points for you. So that's a beautiful advance, genomics. Um, the most commonly used ones are called Oncotype, DX, and Mamaprint, but there are several others uh, commercially available. And um, really empowers women to make that choice without feeling that they're sacrificing survival points. There's also, of course, more drugs that have been developed in the last 20 years that are effectively treating breast cancer and lending themselves to higher cure rates. Our cure rates go up year after year. Mortality goes down approximately 2.2% per year over the last two decades, which is a great yeah. thing. You asked about the horizon. I think what's coming is certainly immunotherapy, where you are able to create a the your body's own ability to seek and destroy cancer cells and to take them out of you, right? They're already sensitized to the cancer that you had and you amplify them like a bajillion times and then give them back to the person. So now they've got this massive army that's like, like marching straight after these exact cancers. Immunotherapy is already in the works and then you do that with medications that potentiate your immune system's ability to seek out those rogue rogue killers um and so and we continue to can develop more what's termed biologically targeted agents the drugs that are better able to disable a cancer's um weaponry because it comes after you at, on multiple levels cancer does and so the more ways that we can then get after it the better on my horizon however is the elimination of disease by focusing on causation. Everything I've talked about right now wow. is a Band-Aid. It ne never once addresses the root cause of why this woman got breast cancer in the first place. Because if you could get after that, uproot that horrible weed and get rid of it, you're getting rid of recurrence potential. You're getting rid of dying from this cancer. If you could stop it from ever starting, yeah. but it's already happened, now you can teach someone dietary and lifestyle intervention and transform their world. And that's that's my focus. And I do think it's going to take a minute, but the world is going to be pushed to shift what they're looking at in terms of health by honestly, planet destruction and climate change is going to push you to be more mindful of your own health. And in so doing, I think we're going to see a huge drop in cancer over the next 20 years. Yeah, more preventative. That's going to be great. Um, so I wonder if that relates to my next question. <laughs> um, you, yeah. Can you tell us more about your cancer kicking powwow and your cancer and powwow podcast and what types of stories uh, you have on, on your podcast? Yes, I would love to talk about it. So the powwow is fun. It's a, it's a podcast where I interview patients and, the, and really bring out their stories of resilience and how they've been transformed by the journey into a person that's more whole, more purposeful with their living. And it's really inspirational. So we, we've also got health warriors in the field who are instrumental in affecting positive change through whatever their field might be. So I have like a medical oncologist or a general doctor, researchers, therapists, dietitians, and get their perspective. But um, everybody's kind of, uh, the patients have their 
visionary stories that are beautiful, but then the, um, the leaders in the field are really aligned with my dietary and lifestyle philosophies of, of more preventive type medicine. I never really use the word, I never say you can prevent cancer because you can't, yeah. but you can maximally reduce your risk. And that's um, my, that's my goal every time I talk. <laughs> sure, yeah. Okay, um, you're also hosting a Cancer Kicking Summit. Um, what are some of the topics at that conference and uh, who's your intended audience? Uh, this is so fun. So the, the summit represents the culmination of everything I've learned in my 25 plus year career as a surgeon, um, a physician and surgeon. And I distill all of the science down into actionable power that will transform your life. The target audience is truly every person uh, who is interested in living her or his best life. Although I do have, uh, you know, it's a little bit more geared toward women because my springboard is breast, but the summit is not about breast cancer. It's called the Cancer Kicking Summit because if you're able to kick cancer, man, you've kicked it all, all those major killers, heart disease, stroke, diabetes, Alzheimer's, obesity, they're all after you. And the same thing that gets after reducing cancer risk will reduce all of your major killer risks. And men have all of those too, mm -hmm. but my use, use the kind of springboard of breast because you know I'm a breast girl. So I do talk about, that but not in specifics at all so the conference is all about taking control of what you eat and don't eat what you think and don't think what you do and don't do and i get down and dirty with this orchard of life i have 10 trees that i want you to plant in your orchard to live the most fruitful bountiful existence possible and i go into the science with each one of those trees it's in a very fun and informative way that inspires you to be like you know what i'm going to give meditation a try i didn't realize that fasting could literally give me an entire entirely replenished rejuvenated army of immune cells in my body i'm after that one or i didn't realize that my thoughts were holding me back from living my best life i didn't realize i told myself facts that aren't true you know i'm a smoker Oh, you are? Okay, then you're never going to quit because then you won't be you because you are a smoker, I guess. You define yourself that way. So we get into metacognition, thinking about thinking um, a lot about eating and fasting and moving. Those are pillars of health change is to, you know, to not be sedentary and how do you move and what exercises and what does that look like in a life that's a cancer kicking life? And then how to eat, what to eat, when not to eat. It's really fun. It's um, so it's online. It's virtual. You can download it mm -hmm. now and start watching. It's um, twelve to fifteen hours. The entire virtual summit is um, is uh, uh, available for ninety days when you buy it, and then the uh, the live summit is so cool. It's a, uh, a Terranea which is an oceanfront resort in California in Palos Verdes wow. is breathtaking. And you can come to that. Just check the website, pinklotus.com slash summit for the next dates we do, you know, in the interest of keeping it evergreen, it's always happening soon. So check out when the next one is. And um, if you can't wait, you can always do the virtual summit. Oh, well, sounds like a great experience and that you have a lot to offer. And um, I was just wondering if you'd like to share anything else with us today. Um, you know what, please join. There's a couple of amazing um, things that I've got going on that I'd love for you to be a part of. One of them is called Power Up. The other is Breast Buddies. So Pink Lotus Power Up and Breast Buddies, entirely free. Power Up is an online social network for all women who are interested in being healthy and it goes it's more than a social network that's just one part of it we've got blogs and recipes and the powwow and my kitchen and it just have a look around there's a lot going on you can post um breast list for example you could post your gently used wigs scarves hats and you can buy sell trade them it's kind of like you know craigslist for stuff and we've got breast groups where you can go in and chat like anybody else on tamoxifen and hate it and just really get into some of the more private aspects of, of treatment and what you're going through in life 
Breast Buddies pairs women age for age, stage for stage, treatment for treatment with those who have been there, done that. That's a really beautiful thing. So Power Up is for every woman. We've got about 50,000 members now and we've got about 5,000 in Breast Buddies, which I'd love to see. It's international, again, totally free. So you can be newly diagnosed and you need a buddy or you can be one of the been there, done that ladies and you can become a buddy and you get paired. So if you put in like I'm 52 and need a mastectomy and chemo and all these people pop up that fit that but she has a 12 or 15 year old and you're like, oh, so do I, I wanna to talk to her. Then you can reach out specifically. And it's a really um, sacred sisterhood of friendship and support solely for the purposes of that. Uh, there's no other motives behind it. It's just connecting women with each other. And then finally, I encourage everybody to check out Pink Lotus Elements, which is the store I mentioned that is just chock full of really helpful products before, during and after a diagnosis to help with risk reduction, with symptom management, improving comfort, and just overall uh, making your life better. Okay, then, uh, you know, one more question on those support groups on Facebook or are they on um, the Pink Lotus uh, website? It's on our website. So it's okay. a secure platform, pinklotus.com slash power up. All right, well, thank you so much. And thank you for the, all that you do for your patients and the community. Oh, you bet. It's very nice meeting you too. Nice to meet you too, Liz. Okay, well, have a good Bye. day. Bye-bye.